Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Michelle Fondin and welcome to my Twin Flame Story vlog. I'm the author of, I'm gonna give you the trilogy guys, <laughs> Twin Flame Romance, The Journey to Unconditional Love, Twin Flame Union, Seven Keys to a Healthy Twin Flame Journey, and my brand spanking new book, oops, wrong side, my brand new book, The Empowered Divine Feminine, Becoming an Unstoppable Woman in the 21st Century and Beyond. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Thank you for subscribing below. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications, and thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. Don't forget, I do readings, tarot, and astrology. You can book that below. But welcome if you're new and welcome back if you are returning. We're gonna do a vlog today. We're gonna do a Twin Flame Story vlog. And the topic is, is Wuthering Heights, see my post-it note there? I'm gonna read to you. Is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, the classic book. Is it a Twin Flame book, question mark? Okay, we're gonna get into that. We are going to absolutely positively get into that. I was inspired. Oh my goodness, this is my Grogu Tumblr. I've got my Grogu, my Padawan, and I will be on vacation for the next eight days. So you will be seeing some shorts, some postings, repostings of shorts from long form videos. Please do check those out if you're interested. Also, you can go back and view one of my many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos, whether you are interested in the twin flame topic, self-improvement, the chakras, or alcoholism, addiction, and recovery, whatever you happen to be interested in. I'm gonna take a sip. This is Ticino's Caramel Dandelion Nut Tea. Mm. And no, I do not get kickbacks from Ticino. I just really, really, really like their tea, but I should probably reach out when my YouTube channel gets a little more popular. Right now, it's just not that popular. I'm happy if you are watching. <laughs> Honestly, that is Pluto, right? I feel like everybody's so nervous about this Pluto and Aquarius stuff, and probably on some level, we should be nervous, but... Pluto is like, if I diminish something, if I transform something, can you take it? And I had a little conversation with Pluto and I said, if you wanna redo my YouTube channel, that's fine with me. I was holding on for so long and now I'm like, hmm, it doesn't even matter anymore. It doesn't even matter. It did matter a lot to me. I mean, I was holding on for dear life. And now that I'm getting like, 50 views in my long form videos, maybe 60. I'm like, do what you want with me, Pluto. If you want to destroy it, destroy it. Fine with me. There's nothing I can do about it anyway. I will be doing more vlog type videos, I think. I mean, I'm just, I'm trying to re-examine. So before we get into Wuthering Heights, which my commitment to myself in 2024, was to read way more. I mean, my goal is to read probably like three or four books a month. Hey, when I was a kid, I used to read a book a day, a novel a day, every day. That is what I did. And that's why I'm an author. That's why I'm a writer, because I was so committed to writing and reading. I started writing poetry when I was like seven or eight years old. So I've been at this a long time, but then because I was so absorbed with the YouTube channel, so absorbed with other projects, I read less and less and less and less. I would read here and there. Of course, I would read for research for my books and such, but reading for pleasure, that was completely out of the window, completely out of the window. I made a commitment to myself in 2024 to read for pleasure and to read for research for my upcoming books. I have an upcoming book right? Not books, plural yet, but I do have an upcoming book that will not be released until March of 2025 because I'm giving myself a little break here. Because my commitment is to read and do a little more pleasure reading, I started with a classic. Like I went to this beautiful used bookstore that is 
the best used bookstore I think I've ever been to because it's so neat and orderly and I really like neat and orderly. And it's called Book Off. You can see the sticker there. It's called Book Off in Costa Mesa, California. I believe they have more than one location. Great store, really, really, really great store. So I bought four used books. Two of them were actually for my research. One was a book of poetry by Thoreau that I don't think I've ever read Thoreau except for in school textbooks. Wuthering Heights, I haven't read since I was 16. Now, this was a high school assignment. I was probably in 10th grade, if that, 9th or 10th grade. And I don't even think I read the whole thing. I probably read like half of the book. And so this was the first one of the classics that I did pick up to read for pleasure. And boy, oh boy, is this book dark. It is so dark. It is really grim. It is super dark. I don't know if you've read it, if you had to read it for high school, or maybe you read it in high school, or maybe you just read the Cliff Notes. Because chances are, in high school, I probably read half, kind of like where I'm at. I'm, I'm actually two thirds of the way through. But even halfway through the book, I was like, this is so dark. This is so depressing, so dark. All the characters are really, really, really horrible, mean people and really dark. Why would I read this book? Why am I trying to read this book? And if that was the same me in high school that had the same impression of Wuthering Heights, I probably opted for the Cliff Notes version to take the test. Because again, I am rereading this and I'm like, are there any characters worth saving? They're all kind of crap characters, except for the maid, um, her name is Ellen. I don't think that's her, it's maybe Nellie, I don't know. Anyway, most of the characters are just crap. They are so mean and awful to each other, but there are a couple things worth noting here. And one took me by surprise. It took me by total surprise because Wuthering Heights, you guys, is a twin flame novel. It is 100% a bona fide twin flame novel. This is insane. I had no idea, no idea whatsoever. So even in reflecting backward in time to the time I was 16 and reading Wuthering Heights, certainly it appeared to be like a love triangle type book. A lot of tragedy, I remember, but I didn't remember it being anything particularly out of the ordinary, if you will. But it was in rereading the book that I came upon passages when Catherine, the main love interest character in the book, and Heathcliff, the other main love interest character in the book, when she's giving a speech to her maid, her nurse, if you will, and she is explaining what the reality of the connection with Heathcliff and her is, it is a twin flame description and I'm going to read it to you. But first, I just wanna give you a background for those of you that may have never read Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. It is a book that was written in the 1700s, I believe the publication date is 1784 was the publication date of this book. It was written prior to that. Now remember, Emily Bronte is a woman and she had all sisters except for one brother and her sisters were all poets and writers and all of them died by the time they were 30. Every single solitary one of them. And guess what? Every single character in this book died by maximum the age of 30, 32, and most died in their teens, if not in childhood. So really tragic, really crazy, perhaps true to the times at the time, since most of them died of like tuberculosis or something, something to that sort, or like uh, measles or 
there was, I don't know if it was yellow fever at that time, but there was some kind of like fever that would cause people to die. And the other one was definitely tuberculosis. I believe in the olden days, they called it consumption. And certainly all of Emily Bronte's family died of one of those diseases, including herself. Emily Bronte wrote this book in her 20s. And it must have been in early 20s because it took a while before the book got published. And in fact, I believe it was her sister that published the book, um, Elizabeth Bronte, not Emily, but it was her sister or maybe Charlotte. I'm not sure, really. <laughs> I'd have to go back and look. But she wrote it in her 20s. Now, think about that. 1700s, no internet, no telephones, right? No social media. And yet, Emily Bronte wrote about the concept of twin flames. Now, my question to you is, how did she know? How did she even know that that was a thing? How did she even know that that existed? How did she know? Well, my answer to you is one, she was probably a twin flame. Maybe she met someone, she had this connection, she could not explain it. Now, in fact, Emily Bronte and I think all of her sisters, if not most of her sisters, were never married because they were trying to get jobs. <laughs> I think their parents died when they were very young and they were trying to become teachers. Maybe one became a teacher and then they were writers, but of course they couldn't even publish under their real names. So they had to take male pen names in order to publish. And even when Wuthering Heights was published, it got very unpopular reviews in the time because they said it's a coarse novel with coarse language. And it's true, it's actually true. It's like, I don't know why it became a classic because it's so darn negative. The whole thing is negative. There's nothing positive about this book. It is so negative. But what I would like to do now to tickle your fancy is to read the section where Catherine, who is, I believe, probably the divine feminine counterpart, Heathcliff is the divine masculine counterpart. To give you a little bit of background, Catherine and Heathcliff are brother and sister, but through adoption. Catherine's parents, or Catherine's father rather, adopted Heathcliff because he was a gypsy child, according to the father. So we don't know where they come, came from. We think that today the word gypsy comes from the immigrants from Romania, but in those times going to England, because this was in England, were the people considered to be gypsies? Were they from Romania? They explain in the book, or Emily explains in the book, that Heathcliff was very dark skinned. So who knows? Who knows? They keep referring to Heathcliff as having been the gypsy child. Emily's father, Mr. Earnshaw, takes pity on this small child that he sees wandering the streets of, I don't know if it was Gimmerton or London. I think Gimmerton was the local town. London, of course, is London. <laughs> but he takes the little boy under his wing and brings him in. And Mr. Earnshaw really, 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 really loved Heathcliff, even loved Heathcliff more than his own children. But he died. And then, of course, everybody hated Heathcliff, especially Catherine's brother. But Catherine had this crazy, crazy love interest, but not romantic as much as they were like twins. It was said in the earlier parts of the book that everywhere Catherine went, Heathcliff went, everywhere Heathcliff went, Catherine went, they were completely and utterly inseparable. So there you go. They don't talk about twins. They don't say the word twins, but they kind of make it a point to say that they were inseparable and that they also had a very poor temperament. Like both of them had a poor temperament. In this section that I'm gonna to read to you, and I'm gonna read like a few quotes that Catherine is saying when she's talking to her maid, Nellie, and she's explaining that she is going to marry Edgar Linton, who is their neighbor. So there are two families, the Lintons and the er Earnshaws, Heathcliff and Catherine and Hindley are under the Earnshaw family. And Edgar and Isabella 
are the children of the Lintons, who are wealthier and more refined, if you will. What's really funny about this book is that nobody seems to work, but everybody seems to have money. So it's just like, what are these people doing all day? Like nobody works, but they all seem to have money. Who knows? So here she's explaining why she wants to marry Linton, but why she also can't marry Heathcliff. Now, there, remember, there's no blood relation between Catherine and Heathcliff because Mr. Earnshaw adopted Heathcliff or took him under his wing. So this is Catherine like explaining to Nellie, the maid, why she really shouldn't marry Linton and why she isn't going to marry Heathcliff. So she says, I've no more business to marry Edgar Linton than I have to be in heaven. And if the wicked man in there had not brought Heathcliff so low, I shouldn't have thought of it. It would degrade me to marry Heathcliff now, so he shall never know how I love him. And that, not because he's handsome, Nelly, but because he's more myself than I am. Okay, twin flame, right? He is more myself than I am. Whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same. Now, I've heard this quote in modern movies, but I never knew it was a Wuthering Heights quote. I'm gonna repeat that. Whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same. Twin flame! Okay, that's crazy. She's explaining this over and over to her maid, but her maid is like, don't talk to me of this. Like, I don't understand this. So then she continues on and she said, every Linton on the face of the earth might melt into nothing before I could consent to forsake Heathcliff. Oh, that's not what I intend. That's not what I mean. I shouldn't be Mrs. Linton where such a price demanded. He'll be as much to me as he has been all his lifetime. And of course, she is talking about Heathcliff. And she's saying like, he is still me. And even if I marry Linton, he is still me. So if you're a twin flame, you know exactly what Catherine is talking about. I'm skipping ahead about a page and she, this is still her rant, right? She's trying to explain to her maid why she's marrying Linton, why she can't marry Heathcliff, and how they can never, ever, ever be separate. Because the maid is saying to her, look, if you marry Edgar Linton, you are never going to be with Heathcliff and you will be separated from him forever. And Catherine responds by saying, that's ridiculous. Heathcliff and I can never be separated. Okay, another huge twin flame concept. <laughs> Here we go. My great miseries in this world have been Heathcliff's miseries. And I watched and felt each from the beginning, my great thought in living is himself. If all else perishes and he remained, I should still continue to be. And if all else remained and he were annihilated, the universe would turn to a mighty stranger. I should not seem a part of it. My love for Linton is like the foliage in the woods. Time will change it. I'm well aware as winter changes the trees. My love for Heathcliff resembles the eternal rocks beneath, a source of little visible delight, but necessary. Nellie, I am Heathcliff. He's always, always, always in my mind, not as a pleasure any more than I am always a pleasure to myself, but as my own being. So don't talk of our separation again. It is impractical and, and she was going to say like, it's impossible, but her maid like stops her. <laughs> she stops short and she's like, I'll have no more talk of this. This is crazy. This is crazy talk. So doesn't this sound so much? I'm looking for another short passage. It sounds so much like us, one of us, <laughs> talking to a family member or friend about being a twin flame and then responding to us, you're totally crazy. You are just totally crazy. This is when Catherine is dying. <laughs> so spoiler alert, Catherine dies before Heathcliff. And she's actually 
so confused about all of her feelings about Heathcliff and the fact that she did end up marrying Edgar Linton and uh, Heathcliff got angry with her. And then later on in the story, he comes and starts visiting her again and then she's happy again. But at one point, her husband says, you cannot see Heathcliff ever again. And she goes mad. Like she literally goes crazy because she can't live without him. Now, again, that sounds like a divine feminine, more obsession mode, but here she is dying and Heathcliff does come to see her. And he says to her, be with me always, take any form, drive me mad, only do not leave me in this abyss where I cannot find you. Oh God, it is unutterable. I cannot live without my life. Again, Heathcliff is referring to her as his life, his soul. I cannot live without my soul. I believe later in the story, just because I read the um, the annotations, this book has like annotated versions of other writers that comment on the story, the classic. And I believe later in the story, Catherine's ghost does come back to Heathcliff. <laughs> but there are other some interesting points where when she has a fever, when she is not well, there are points at which she's hearing Heathcliff's voice, even though he's not there. Um, so that is like super interesting too, when we talk about twin flame telepathy, <laughs> right? But it's this, it's interesting, even though the darkness of the story is like terribly dark, it's so crazy dark, it still explains the twin flame connection because both parties, both Heathcliff and Catherine, they have this push-pull runner-chaser dynamic and they have this dynamic that they like love each other to death, but they also can't stand to be around each other um, because of the intensity of the passion, the intensity of the need to be together. The other thing that both of them say is like, you are my soul. Like you are my soul and I cannot live without my soul. And so it's just like super fascinating to me. Like when I realized that, that one passage where she was talking about the fact that her and Heathcliff could never be separated because she is him and he is her. My jaw dropped because I was like, what? Like what? Emily Bronte in the 1700s wrote about twin flames. Now I know poets in the past, like the poet Rumi wrote about twin flames, but he was really writing about a relationship with God. Like a lot of people look at his poetry and they're like, oh, that's definitely a twin flame thing where it well may be, but most of Rumi's poetry, which was ecstatic poetry, most of his poetry speaks about God and like him seeing God in the relationship with God. And so he refers to God as like my beloved, right? And so it does sound very twin flamey, but this is like a direct fiction story, a story of fiction written in the 1700s about twin flames from a very, 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 very twin flame perspective. For me, this is like quadruple validation that the reality of twin flames is not a collective delusion, okay? <laughs> twin flames are not a collective delusion. It is real, it is as real as this book that I am holding, it is real as the words that are written in the book. It is crazily real. And I knew this, it's just sometimes you get slapped in the face with it again and again. And in fact, I realized I'm recording this on my Twin Flames birthday. Total coincidence or not a coincidence? Really weird. I did not plan this. I'm going on vacation. I'll be away for eight days. So I just wanted to record this video for you because as I've been reading through this book, I was like, this is too crazy. It's too crazy that a girl, Emily Bronte, a girl, not a woman, a girl who really did not travel the world. She didn't. In fact, I believe they sent her away to school, but she did not like it. She stayed for like two months and then moved back home. So she 
was not a worldly woman. Emily Bronte was not a woman who traveled <laughs> in the 1700s. She sat and read books and wrote poetry and wrote stories. That's pretty much all she did. And she wrote about twin flames and died at age 30. Like what? For me, there's no other explanation for that other than the fact that she may have met someone who was her twin flame and she's a twin flame or she was channeling twin flames. Like she was channeling the energy of twin flames in writing the story of Catherine and Heathcliff. Now it's dark. I'm not telling you that this is like a happy ending book or that it's a twin flame happy ending. No, 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 no. I believe that this twin flame story between Catherine and Heathcliff is really more about the dark night of the soul, the dark, dark, dark night of the soul, the distorted masculine and the distorted feminine because neither Catherine nor Heathcliff ascended into the higher essences of who they were. Neither one of them did. They both stayed in the lower masculine and the lower feminine. They both stayed in a push-pull, the I hate you, I love you kind of relationship. They both pushed each other's buttons to no end. And they both were terribly, terribly codependent. It was an aspect of Twin Flames that is the reality of Twin Flames until you ascend, until you do the work until you are spiritually more evolved and more awakened, right? Emily Bronte's version of Catherine and Heath, Heathcliff was like a snapshot into what the twin flame experience is like. It wasn't about the ascension process. What is interesting though, is that it is definitely outlining everything that a twin flame feels on this journey the unexplainable everythings of, ah, uh, this person's always in my head. I cannot get them out of my head. Like that kind of feeling. This person is my soul. I can't live without my soul. Why is my soul also in their body? That makes no sense to me. Yeah, I mean, it shook me up a lot in reading that. I, I don't even know if I'll finish the book. It's so dark. It is so dark and so horrid and terrible. All the characters are terrible, 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 terrible terrible people, just awful people, pretty much every last one of them, just awful, awful, awful people. I mean, they mistreat animals, they mistreat each other. It's just, it's awful. If you are a twin flame and you're stuck in the terrible phase of obsession, feeling hopeless, do check out these two bookaroonies because they can really help you and it does help to support the channel. But moreover, it helps to support you on your twin flame journey. So I wanna thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll be back with long form videos probably in about 10 days from now. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for subscribing to my channel below. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications and thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. Thank you for your support of my YouTube channel by buying a book, joining a boot camp, and I will see you very, very soon in the next video. Bye bye.